Hello, in this episode I'm steaming milk with a home espresso machine. Follow along and I'll teach you exactly how to do it. If you do have one of these attachments on your steam wand, you may find that you're not getting the results that you want. This could be the problem, it may not be. Try with and without it on. I've found it creates way too much foam and it kind of just turns the milk into like a foamy bubble bath that you dump on top of your coffee and it's not really what you're after if you want a barista style coffee. So if you want to make some smooth silky milk then I would suggest experimenting without these kind of attachments on. So. When we fill the pitcher with milk, we're going to fill it just below this uh, bottom of the spout. Um, if you're doing a cappuccino, you can feel like a little bit lower. If you're doing a flat white, you would go a bit higher. It basically just depends on how much space you want to leave for expansion of the milk. Obviously, if you're making a cappuccino, it's going to have a lot more froth than, say, a flat white. So you're going to need that extra room for the milk to expand. Otherwise, it's just going to overflow. And that will also come in handy if you haven't got it too high once you've steamed the milk because at the end you may have seen before people swirl in it and that's to polish the milk it's the last step before we pour it you won't be able to swirl it properly if you haven't got sufficient room in the pitcher to do so but you'll see more of that later on okay so let's talk about pitcher placement obviously you want to hold in one hand place the spout up against the wand tilt it towards yourself so that the tip of the steam wand is at the center of the pitcher and then you're going to go off to one side. Okay, just to further illustrate that, if you're just looking down the top of your pitcher, you're going to find the middle first and then move to the side around about here. So that's going to be roughly between the third and fourth quarter. If you want to tilt to the other side, that's fine. We'll just obviously be aiming here. Doesn't make a difference, we're just going to change which direction the vortex spins. And you're going to have your steam wand remaining aimed in this position throughout the whole process. You may move it slightly in small adjustments to either side to see if you can increase the speed of the vortex. But just bear in mind if you're moving around too much, then the vortex will not have a steady speed to it and particularly if you've got a lower steam pressure you kind of need to find the spot and then stay there until the process is finished. Okay so the next thing to understand is the depth in which we're going to have the wand submerged at any time. Whenever you're turning the wand on or off make sure that you have it fully submerged and by fully submerged I don't mean the entire wand just at least a centimetre of the tip. Otherwise you'll create a load of foam on the top. So if you've just made some perfect milk and then you lower it down like that before turning it off, you're just gonna ruin the finish. And also you could get burnt because it may splash. So during the steaming process, there is two phases. The first phase is stretching the milk. So during this phase, we're gonna have the steam on tip just about submerged and in this phase we're stretching the milk so we're injecting air and we're creating micro bubbles that we're going to incorporate through the milk in phase two. So phase two we simply we're still in this position that I discussed earlier you're going to slide up slightly so that the wand is a little more submerged so maybe about a centimeter deep and then during this phase, we're just focusing on incorporating all those bubbles in a decent vortex throughout all of the milk. And then we're also keeping an eye on the temperature of the milk by touching the side of the pitcher. Once it's too hot to touch for more than like half a second, it means it's ready. So you would keep the milk submerged and then turn the steam wand off. Okay, so. Just further illustrate that, we've got phase one, phase two, this is your steam wand, the pitcher, and we've got it just about submerged, so 
We're just breaking the surface of the milk and injecting air, creating loads of little bubbles everywhere. More so just under the surface rather than on the top. There will be some on the top, but you don't want to have large bubbles forming like that. If you see any of that happening, immediately make a small adjustment upwards to further submerge the wand um, because you won't be able to incorporate all of that throughout the milk. During this phase, it will sound um, like this, like ripping paper. That's a good indicator that you're doing it right. You don't want that sound to get too loud and too constant, otherwise you're at risk in it getting out of control and making a load of foam. So even if it's just kind of slightly like that in intermittent bursts, that's probably gonna be the best bet. If we just stopped here, then we'd be left with foam on the top and liquid on the bottom. So that brings us to phase two. Okay, so by this time, the milk is actually increased in volume. If you're doing a cappuccino, um, it's gonna increase quite a lot in volume because obviously you want to inject more air to create more foam. So you'd obviously stay in phase one for a little bit longer. If you're doing a flat white, you'd move on to phase two a bit sooner. Um, so here we are in phase two, we've moved the pitch up, so we further submerged the steam wand so that it's fully submerged in the sense that it's no longer breaking the surface of the milk and injecting air. So we're just focusing now on that vortex, which is gonna pull all these little bubbles that we made in the first phase and all incorporate them throughout all of the milk and leave you with that smooth, creamy texture. So you shouldn't actually see any visible bubbles, it should have a bit of a, a shiny finish to it. And also, during this phase, it shouldn't be making the same kind of sound it was making in the first phase. It should actually be quite quiet in comparison if you've made enough foam density to absorb the sound. If you don't have enough foam density in there, let's say if you was doing a, a flat white or by accident you didn't inject enough air, then you will be getting a bit more sound vibrating um, during this later stage of phase two. See if you can notice when I move from phase one up to phase two. So the, the movements are quite subtle and the indicator of when to do that for yourself is if you're making a latte, it's gonna be when it just starts to get slightly warm, like it's no longer cold, because obviously you've put cold milk in there and it's cold to begin with, but then it will kind of meet <clears throat> the temperature of your, your skin and that is your cue to move up to phase two. You may stay there a little bit longer if you're making a cappuccino, but not too long, because if you're still down here stretching milk in phase one and it's already getting hot, you're not gonna have enough time in phase two to incorporate it throughout all of the milk before it's piping hot and you've got to stop steaming it. So, as soon as it's no longer cold and it, you can feel that it's warm to any degree, then start moving up to phase two. You see, immediately after I finish steaming the milk, I'll polish it and I'll keep it moving. And the reason why you don't want to just sit it down while you're doing something else is that the longer it's sat there, it's beginning to separate. So you'll have like foam on the top and a liquid on the bottom. And that's going to be no good if you want it to pour latte out, especially. So always keep it moving. Um, the reason why I don't pull the shot of espresso and steam the milk at the same time is I simply don't have the functionality on this machine to do so. So I have to either do one or the other at any given time. So I choose to steam the milk first and then pull the shot so that I've got you know a decent amount of crema left over and it hasn't dispersed by the time I've steamed the milk. So as soon as that's ready, I've been keeping this moving and then I'll pour straight away. Um, I'm not going to go into details of how to pour latte art because I'm by no means an expert at all and this video would be way too long. Um, one tip that I will give you is don't concentrate too much on how to pour patterns when you're just learning because unless you get your milk perfect you won't be able to pour any patterns. So the milk is really key into pouring latte art, that's what you need to focus on perfecting. Um, it's going to need to be of a consistency that's not too stodgy, not too runny. 
it's going to kind of look like wet paint with a glossy finish on the top and no bubbles in there. All right, so that's it. I'm going to get straight into it now and let me know how you go. And thanks again for watching. See you later.